Hi there. Welcome to another episode of Tinnitus TV. Today, I am talking to the one and only Derek Trucks. As fans know, Trucks has been married to singer-guitarist Susan Tedeschi for more than two decades now. But really, he's been in love with Layla for pretty much his whole life. And by Layla, of course, I mean Layla and other assorted love songs. The legendary 1970 double album by Eric Clapton's all-star band, Derek and the Dominoes. Truck says his dad actually named him after the album and used to play it for him and his brother as they were going to sleep at night. More than a decade ago, the slide guitar master actually toured with Clapton, who worked many of the songs into his set. And in 2019, the Tedeschi Trucks band even covered the album live in its entirety, releasing the recordings in 2021 as Layla Revisited. But if you think Trucks was done with Layla after that, think again. The TTB's latest project, I Am The Moon, might be his ultimate Layla tribute. A four album, 24 song concept piece loosely inspired by the same 12th century Persian poem about star-crossed lovers that Clapton read decades ago. As the first volume Crescent arrived, Trucks, who also happens to be one of the nicest people I have ever interviewed, got on the Zoom to talk about this project, his relationship with Layla, becoming a baseball card, and tons more. Enjoy. Hey, man. Hello, Derek Trucks. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing? I am good. Thanks for asking. Pleasure to talk to you again, especially about this, this crazy ass giant album project of yours. <laughs> uh, just for people who don't know, uh, I Am The Moon is, is four albums, 24 new songs, two hours plus of new music. Um, all coming out over three months this summer, uh, produced by you, uh, accompanied by full-length videos for each album, and all inspired <laughs> by a 12th century epic romantic poem. So my first question, Derek Trucks, is obvious. <laughs> have you considered decaf? <laughs> I have, but it doesn't work, man. I, I need the coffee. <laughs> Clearly, awesome. decaf would not work for you. I mean, <laughs> I, I awesome. mean, seriously, this is this is just a crazy ambitious project. How do you even start with this? I mean, was this something where you um, had this idea of let's do something big because we've got a bunch of time, or or was this something that started off small and just kind of kept growing? It it started small, man. It really did. It was uh, it was somehow an organic thing that uh, that took shape. I mean, we were all the whole world was in the same boat. I mean, we were all stuck, uh, not being able to do the things you wanted to do. There was a lot of uncertainty. I mean, we have, there's 24, 25 of us band and crew, and we're used to working 200 days a year, 150 shows a year. And um, to go from that to everything's Nothing, done. Right? Yeah. yeah, and it ended up being 18, 19 months of no work, no income, no gigs. The, um, you know, you're, the first few months of the lockdown were kind of incredible because you're we'd never stopped and everybody I mean there's a lot of fear and you don't know what's going on but I love being home with our family and I think a lot of the band felt that way too it was like wait we've never stopped like this and there was but after a few months of that um you want to do what you do you know you kind of you get that itch to play music or, or be together with other human beings and all of that so Mike Madison uh singer songwriter in the band um he had this idea we had just done the layla record uh, we had played the layla live show with trey anastasia from fish and we released a live record um but in digging into that mike was reading through all the lyrics and he just had this notion of you know i love this record it's maybe a little one note as far as the theme it's just love with somebody i can't have uh I want it, <laughs> I can't have it. And um, he was familiar with the Layla Majnun poem, the Nazimi poem. And he had this idea of, uh, hey, since we can't be together, what if the principal songwriters in the band, what if we all read this same piece of work? Um, but what if we thought about it from Layla's perspective? Like, what does she think about this? What does she think about this lovesick psycho <laughs> in wow. the woods? Like, what? And so that kind of started the, the, the process. And, um, and if anything, we thought it would just be a fun little exercise and, uh, and just a, a thought exercise or just something fun to ruminate about while we were stuck at home. Um, and then when we were able to finally get um, 
a few people tested uh, and get down to the house, we, we asked people if they could, you know, block off a few weeks and we just write, record, just play, see what would happen. And there were so many ideas right out of the gate. It, what I thought would be one or two songs was almost everyone showed up with three or four <laughs> songs. And we had never been together with Gabe Dixon and Brandon Boone. This is a, kind of a, our, it's a new band. I mean, we lost some people over the last few years when Kofi passed. It was kind of, we had to kind of think, are we going to keep doing this? Are we going to shake it up? Or what, what are we going to do? And in some ways, this forced us into just thinking about things totally different, the, the lockdown, everything about it. Um, but once we started writing, we realized there were all these incredible ideas. And it was really, it was effortless just sitting around writing with this crew of people. Um, and the further we got into it, we realized this is all kind of, of a theme. And it, it, it stopped being about just the original concept of what does Layla think about this? And then I could tell people were writing from all different all different moments or just imagery from this poem or all, all the different characters were kind of popping in and it wasn't it wasn't too direct some of it was you yeah. had to kind of work your way to get there which i appreciated but then a lot of it kind of straddled the line between um there's a sense of isolation in a big part of the poem and then obviously that's what everyone in the world was living through at the time so mm -hmm. it was a sense of the concept kind of straddling then and now, you know, it's a thousand years apart, but it's, uh, it's essentially the same thing. Um, I mean, different, different ways of getting there. Um, so we just followed it and we just kept writing and recording. And uh, before we knew it, we had more material than we knew what to do with. And that's when the concept of, you know what, this is more than one record. I don't like the idea of just releasing it all as a double album because mm -hmm. no one's going to sit down and listen to two hours in one chunk. It just, no one has that, I mean, no yeah, one but, ever yeah, really right. did, <laughs> yeah, you know, but, but even us, we would go upstairs and listen to this music after we would record for a few days. We, and, and we realized that after, after a certain amount of <clears throat> material, it's kind of diminishing returns of how you feel about it. And we started breaking it up into smaller listening sessions. And, and then we would get done listening and everyone would, just like, would kind of look at each other like that was really, that was fun. Like I enjoyed that. I want to hear more, you know? And so <clears throat> that's when we thought, you know, this, let's, let's think of this as a traditional story arc. You have the beginning, the ascension, the fall, the resolution, um, started thinking about a love supreme and the movements of that thing. Um, and, and those were, that, that's where some of the, the concept came from. And then a good friend of ours who had been in and around the studio, um, while we were making it, he's a, He's a, a principal at a school here in, in Jacksonville and a superintendent of schools. He's an educator, and, but a big music fan. Um, I sent him home with all the material just as a as as an exercise, and he uh, and he uh, went full school on it. He wrote cards out for each song, time signatures, uh, uh, you know the the emotional content of it, the uh, the key signatures, the you know, all, all of these things, who's singing, who's doing what. And, and he, he broke it down. I gave him the four kind of movements and he, and he spent, he, he went full like conspiracy theory yarn on the wall with the, <laughs> just tying things together. <laughs> oh, he, he totally went murder, murder board on it. And it was, uh, and, but when he, he, he showed up with these, uh, these four sequences and I figured it'd be a good jumping off point, but we listened down to them and everyone in the band were like, this, that's it. Like, we're not messing with that. Like, that's perfect. So our, our friend uh, was a, a huge assist in, uh, in piecing it together because it was almost too much material for us to kind of wrap our heads around while we were doing it because, you know, it was a lot to think about. <clears throat> but, you know, we had talked to him about, I really love the whole idea of, I mean, it's not a, it's not a rock opera. We're not sticking to a story here. <laughs> no, it's but, not that narrative. Yeah, it just. No, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Yeah. It's conceptual, but I did like the idea of the first song. You, you have the 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 two the two lovers, the two star-crossed lovers. There's two voices. There's there's Susan. There's Gabe, and then you have the next song come in, and it's the antagonist. It's it's Mike Madison singing mm. about just mayhem, and you feel the horn section walking through the background, and you know just the you started feeling all the characters being introduced early in the first record. And so that those are things we did think about when we were uh, piecing it together. Um, but yeah, it really did kind of take on a life of its own. I mean, it wasn't, we didn't go into it thinking, 
hey, let's do this insane thing. Uh, but <laughs> once once it started happening, we had all this material. Um, I was like, you know what? I've kind of done releasing records where you record 12 tunes and you give them four bonus tracks and half mm -hmm. the songs are on the radio or, or free tracks that you get online before the record comes out. And then people finally get the record on record day and they've heard half of it. And there's no, there's no excitement. It's just, you know, you're like, all right, there's some other songs I haven't heard. It's just, there's something about it that feels different than the way I remember first getting a record when it came out, having, maybe you knew one song or whatever, but you put the thing on and you listen to it and you maybe don't like half of it because you're not familiar with it yet. It takes a while, but I, I miss that feeling. Um, so this was kind of our way of trying to force that a little bit of um, putting visuals with it and not being able to hear the music until the videos drop and then the record comes out. And um, <clears throat> so, you know, the label was pretty amazing because it's not something they do often. And it's no. definitely, <laughs> it's going to be a lot more work for everybody, yeah. but they, they were excited about it. It was a bit overwhelming for everybody, but it was, uh, it was a good challenge. And at the time we had time, which is uh, something we've never had before. <laughs> so I just love the fact that it always comes back to Layla with you. It's like, that's your, that's your, that's your wellspring it's, there. It's so strange, man. Consider how, how different your life would be if that album had not been made? Oh, I have, man. I, I remember when we were driving to the rehearsal to do, um, to rehearse with Trey for that one off show, that Layla show we did. Um, I was thinking about the tune, I Am Yours, and I was trying to remember, did that come from an old Sufi poem? I thought I remember hearing that the tune, I Am Yours, was a direct, <clears throat> like it was directly pulled from the Layla Majnun thing. So I'm looking it up, and the first thing I see is the release date, and it was Susan's birthday, like the day she was born the day, the year she was born. <laughs> I remember thinking, there's no fucking way that's true. <laughs> and, but it was, so yeah, it goes back even further than I thought. <laughs> well, and you might have a different name, right? No, I would totally have a different name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty incredible. I told Eric that when we were over on that tour 10, 15 years ago, <laughs> my dad was sipping tea with him at his place. I was like, yeah, my dad, the roofer, he, he named me after that. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. So uh, how do you then, um, what, wh where do you go from here with this? I mean, are you then trying to turn this into something that you're going to be playing uh, live or are you going to pepper songs into the set or what's the plan? I, I think we'll pepper songs in. I mean, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to force it in, in any way. I mean, most of this stuff, actually all of this stuff, we haven't played any of it live yet. It's all stuff that we wrote and played in the studio and, I imagine some of it will translate really well and other stuff will be harder to, uh, you know, to make fit into what we do live. Um, but I, I think that's kind of the beauty of making records is it doesn't have to be both things. Mm -hmm. um, but, but some of the material, everybody's kind of chomping at the bit to, to dig their teeth into because, I mean, it's tough to write that much new music and then not be able to play it because, you know, mm -hmm. you because we've been on the road for a while now, but the idea was we don't want to play, we don't want any of it out there before the records come out. So right. we're we're digging into old material. We have a hundred or so songs that we play, but everyone's like, when do we get to play the new stuff? <laughs> <laughs> You're like sometime in May or June, we'll get there. Right. But it, it, it's going to be fun. A lot of the songs, um, I, I think instantly are going to be, uh, well, they'll be fun to play. They'll fit the set pretty well. It seems to me too that that a lot of these songs. I mean, because uh, I've heard the first two albums, uh, and I just got them yesterday, so you have to forgive me. But I'm still going. Oh, no, it's a lot. I mean, I, I, I think it's important to not listen to all of it at once. I think it's better that way. Yeah, yeah. But I've only heard these things about three times now, so I'm still kind of they're still they're still settling in. But uh, yeah. a lot of the songs seem to me like, um, especially on the first album, are are kind of. Uh, shorter and dreamier and they almost feel like they, they they go like waves like they almost rise and fall like waves and they seem to me to be things that you in past might have sort of gone okay well that's one part and then yeah. we'll put that with another part and we'll put that with a third part and then we've got a song whereas now these are like single little separate ideas totally but that was I, the kind I, of the way you were approaching it almost or well i think we realized when we were doing this well one that when we were writing and and recording all of this stuff, there was no, there was no end in sight. Like there was no, uh, I mean, it was 18 months of like, what's going on. So we just recorded, there was no, I mean, there was this sense of, I don't know 
when we're going to be playing live again. Right. So there was no sense of like, we hit, these have to, these have to have the, the rise and fall doesn't have to be within every song. Like the, right. a song can just be the rise or the cruise or the, right. um, cause a lot of times you get into this trying to make every song, the whole record, or every song has to be this whole universe unto itself. When right. you realize that some things can just be, it can just be a feeling or a thought or, um, you don't have to over engineer the whole thing, especially when you're maybe thinking a little more macro at the time. So yeah. The, and then, and um, then the second album to me feels a little more like, I think what people would think of totally. as a Tedeschi trucks album, you know, more, more, uh, song form, you know, pieces. Yeah. So how did the third and the fourth, I mean, where do they go conceptually and musically in that arc? I, I feel like the, maybe the third is, uh, is maybe a bit more of an extension of the second one mm. where it, it feels more like that. And then the, the, the fourth one, I think the fourth one, uh, it's got elements of the first record where there's some things that, that maybe wouldn't, uh, maybe it's not full song form. There's, there's more some ideas and, and, and ditties in a way. Than, so it almost than, comes uh, full circle second and third. In, in a way. It does. But yeah. but there's still there's there's song songs on the fourth one too. Because we were really trying to think of like how like what is the especially with the last song, you're thinking, how do you end this? Do you end it on a hopeful note? Because the the poem doesn't necessarily end on uh, that that happy of a note. <laughs> sure. So you're like, do we leave this thing? Like how do we leave this thing? And you know, I I think we we have a we don't have an overly optimistic view of the world, but we do. There are there are rays of hope and light <laughs> in anything we we try to do. So we we gave it a little bit of that, but not mm. not not too much, you know. But we it, it was an interesting thing when you're sequencing a record like this because you you sequence in each record individually, but you're also sequencing the whole thing because you right. you know by the time we finished recording everything, we we already had in mind the 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 four parts. It was just a matter of how to get there. Talking about playing live, uh, I see no Canadian dates on your schedule, so I have to ask, what did we do wrong? <laughs> I don't educated? know, man. It, it's been tough, man. These last few years touring, it's uh, I I don't I don't know what it is. I mean, we we've been wanting to get back to Europe for years. I mean, it's there's been so many uh, booking dates and canceling dates because of regulations that it's it's been. I think everyone's a little gun shy right now, but we're we're me and Sue have been personally pushing them to get back up to Canada. Right, we have, so. we, have, we have some great friends up there. And we, we are huge fans of, uh, of multiple places up there. So we're, sure. we're, uh, we're ready to get back. But yeah, it's been a little tough the last few years. With 25 people and, 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 and more, I'm guessing, on, on the road in your, in your party, you guys must have all had COVID like 17 times now. Man, we have been incredibly lucky. I mean, a few of us have. Um, yeah but it hasn't been bad. I mean, we, when we were back on the road just a few months ago, there was a, it was around uh, playoff football time and we had a day off and we had a big party in me and Sue's room for the full band and the full crew was in our road manager's room all day, just meats and cheese and wine and watching football and within feet of each other. And then the next morning I get a call from our manager and road manager, like we got a problem. Somebody tested <laughs> positive. And I'm like, that means everyone is yeah. screwed. Cause we were, and we went out and got tests and it was two out of 25 that had it. I, I don't even know how that's possible. <laughs> we wow, tested well, good every day that. that week. And yeah, we, we lucked out, man. I, I was that morning I was thinking, well, we're finally going to cancel our first show due to COVID. Here we go. But we uh, we just left two people back at the hotel and went and continued the tour. Cool. <laughs> we hey, I, we I, circled I, back and got them, though. They, they're not yeah, still there. Yeah, they're not yeah. still there. Good, good. <laughs> so, hey, I saw you're a trading card now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was pretty excited about that. I've been a long time uh, baseball, football, basketball card collector. So um, we got they they came to us about doing a, a card one with me, one with Sue, one with both of us. Um, and I was, I was pretty gung ho. We, we bought a bunch of boxes trying to get our own and we, we've yet to score one. So <laughs> we now you got to monitor out. whose is worth more, right? Cause I know you guys well, are competitive. Yeah. No, we, we, my son's been watching for us. He, he sends us eBay updates. <laughs> uh -huh. It's pretty funny, but you know, we, we signed a pile of them on the road 
and there was about 1500 cards that I signed that got lost in like UPS loss or Fed. I forget which one that like, they just never showed up and they like receipts, the whole thing. So there's a whole set of cards of mine that didn't make it to, they didn't make it. Somewhere. <laughs> so, Somebody's got so, yeah, it. So those might be worth more than the other ones. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. So, so now that you've, you know, made this gigantic thing, what do you, what do you do for an encore after this? I mean, what's the next thing going to be six albums on the Dead Sea Scrolls? What, where yeah. do you go, you know? You know, I, I think, I think what this project did for the band and what made us realize is um, you can kind of do anything you want, you know, and having a studio, um, it's nice to reimagine things and it's nice to shake it up and it's nice to do unexpected things. And I mean, there's stuff we've been talking about for years. Like I, I, I mean, I, we could do an EP of Susan doing a gospel record, or we could do a, a blues record with just, you know, just funky old equipment and four or five, two. I, I think it'd be fun to go in the extreme other direction. Um, and almost when, when we have time to do it, think of it almost as a, a monthly or bi-monthly magazine or newspaper or something where you, you record music and you mix it immediately and you master it and you get it out immediately and there's not there's not a whole lot of um you're not overthinking the thing so i i think i think the next phase might be a little bit of of that those kind of things just doing things that we've had in the back of our mind but just never never had the the time or notion to really do it um i think it'd be fun to do do some stuff like that i mean we have it's a 12-piece band there's incredibly talented people in the band it'd be fun to do little versions of the band too. It'd be fun to do a few songs with a trio or quartet or Kevy down here and do as, you know, I, I think it'd be fun to release things like that for a minute. Um, but we've all, we're already talking about writing and recording the next record. It certainly won't be four albums unless, uh, <laughs> God forbid, we're all stuck at home for another two years. I, I don't, say, I don't... Be careful what you wish for, my man. <laughs> yeah, I'm not wishing for that. I'm knocking <laughs> on wood now. All right. Yeah, well, listen, we... please do all of those things you just mentioned because they all sound great. Um, I know fun. you got other people to talk to today, so I will let you go. But uh, thanks again. Uh, always a pleasure to talk to you. And thanks for Good the to chat. Again. I uh, hope to see you sometime soon somewhere down the road. All right. We'll work on it. It's good to see you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.